It's good to be back. It's good to be back. It's good to be back in a tailgate downtown. Yeah, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. It's good to be back in a tailgate downtown. Yeah, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. It's good to be back in a tailgate downtown. Welcome to another edition of Tailgate TV. Today we have a friend of the show, a longtime friend, personal friend of Cody and I. Who do we have, Cody? Well, speak for yourself. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, so glad to have uh, Nick Schweitzer here with us today. As Brett said, great friend of the show, colleague, does prep cast with us, watches a lot of area sports. Um, but that's not what he's here to talk about today. Um, he is also a fishing guru, a fishing finishy. Aniciato. Aniciato. Yeah. Thank you. Aniciato. A fishing auto. He, he fishes for auto. Um, so, yeah, glad to have you here with us today, Nick. Thank you. And really specifically, which is coming up very, very quickly, we're going to talk about spoonbill fishing. Nick loves, and I, I, loves I hope that's not too much, because I think you do love spoonbill fishing. I do. I really do. And it comes up, starts March the 15th, and uh -huh. I think you were the one that told me that. Yep, and goes through the 30th of April. 30th of yep. April. So, yep. okay, so what, month and a half, something like that? Are you ready? No, not at all. Oh, you're not ready? I don't know how much I'll do this year because of my shoulder. Okay, okay, because you had a little bit of a shoulder thing, right? Yep. Now, um, <laughs> which, talking about, Spoonbill, and we'll get into some other things, some other questions about spoonbill fishing. But which do you prefer? Do you prefer spoonbill? Because I know you're a huge crappie fisherman. I know you're you like to bass fish, catfish, all kinds of fun stuff. Which do you prefer? Just you. Now that I'm older, crappie fishing. Okay, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yes, it's a little easier more set on, on the, a bucket. Yes, right? easier on the body. Gotcha. I yeah. understand that perfectly. I love crappie fishing. So, for people that may not know, um, such as myself or I guess anyone watching, what is, uh, I mean, you, you know, when you go fishing for spoonbill or spoonfish, as Brad likes to call them, snagging. Um, you go snagging. Yeah. What is snagging? You know, uh, how do you, because you're not, you're not casting a line down there, right? No, you're, you're casting. Okay. You so just don't what, put bait on it. You just okay. pull hooks through the water. Okay. So, yeah. give us a little bit of that process. I mean, you just throwing, a, throwing a hook down that's there and how pull it is, the fish yeah. up? Yeah. One hook, several well, hooks. Well, you put two trebles. Two trebles Two on, on a line, okay. Um, usually seven odd. That's the size that I use, but then use maybe a four ounce to eight ounce sinker. Okay. And so yeah, it's snagging. There's no, there's no fishing about it. It's snagging. And so you ain't leaving it down there. You're throwing. No, it you're, you're it jerking it in. Yeah. Jerking, jerking it up. It in, yep. Um. So what size test line are you using? I use eighty. Eighty pound yeah. test. Okay. Well, you talk about putting a sinker on there using these these hooks. How how far? I mean, are you snagging kind of on the surface? Or are you going deep no, down? How where deep are you down going? Usually, is yeah. it? Yeah, okay. you let it go all the way to the bottom, and then you start pulling at an angle, and that's usually where you catch them. Hmm. They're mostly bottom feeders. Okay, so plankton feed plankton eaters. Plankton, right, right. right. They Obviously. hang out at the rust bucket. They don't like the crabby pack. <laughs> Correct. They like plankton. <laughs> well, wow. and again, they don't have to. Yeah, spoonbill. Uh, they don't. Obviously, because they, you know, it's it's hard to put plankton on a hook. So, therefore, that's why <laughs> hard to you have to stay. Yeah. But um, <laughs> that is that is a new way of doing it, I guess. Right. <laughs> right. Well, that was, that was my thought is, it, yeah, I mean. Gum bucket, not rust bucket. Yeah, I, I, bucket. I, knew, I knew what you meant. Everybody else knew what you meant. So, what kind of a pole are we talking about for this? A big one. Yeah, big heavy duty, right? <laughs> yeah, when I first started, we did uh, pin forty nine reels. The okay, big yeah, yeah, ones, right, and like a, a eagle stick. Okay, real thick pole. Okay, it was heavy, right? A lot of work, right? Um, and you can cast that thing way out there. So that first pull, like when we went to Warsaw, that first pull, if you caught it out there that far, it was a fight. But really, yeah. As we got older, we started finding catfish rods work a little bit better. Okay. Then That's a, what I would just just because they have a little more play yes, to them, a little more play. Okay, yeah. and then a smaller reel too, a catfish reel. Okay, yeah. okay. Because yeah. you were you're talking when you're talking about those pins, you're talking about stuff that they catch big, yeah, like offshore yeah. fish with. Yeah, they're big, yeah, and expensive. They were yes, super expensive. Yeah, wow. 
that's that's it's a lot of work when you you think about how much these things weigh and how big they can be yeah you've got a yeah yeah you put some stuff behind it my first time getting involved with snagging was with the disney's out adrian and they took a store saw and it was so cold you would have to cast maybe three times pull it in go back stand by the fire and let your let the ice fall off the really yeah Yeah, it was that cold and i caught my first one it was about that big i was hooked ever since yeah see maybe had to pull it right off the mom okay but what i'm saying is that to me is harder than catching one of these behemoths i mean you know how good of a snagger you have to be (laughs) to catch one that's that big that's pretty good stuff yeah, I was hooked from that day on. So, I think that well, so, was, was, so was the fit. Correct. Little, little side question here. Uh, and I'm thinking about, because I watch Swamp People, by the way. I don't know if you watch Swamp People or not, but it, yeah. I, I love this show. People that live in the swamp. Well, they alligator. They uh, snag them? Some. Yeah. I and see I, them running yeah, like towards, some lines and stuff. Well, we, well, yes, they do that too. But if they see one, there's a couple of these guys that have these Holes, and I think it was 80 pound test, if I'm not mistaken. That's what made when you throw really? that, it's kind of, and they'll throw it across the back of these gators and then really in until they, and of course, the, um, the hooks are bigger and, and they're homemade. And of course, they have, they even have ones that they put on rope rope that they make. Yeah. And, those. and they're, and they're huge. I mean, they're like shark. They were the ones they dangle like a chicken carcass off. Well, they do that too, but yeah. they even. But that's they not even, what you're talking about, right? But yeah. they even do that. But anyway, uh, and they catch these gators, and they're five and six hundred pounds. Yeah, with the it's amazing what you can do on that eighty pound test. You yeah, ever thought yeah. about snagging for gators, Nick? No, no. If it, if we do it around here, it's going to be that's a scary deal. That's a trip, though. Take a trip, go to Louisiana. I would. I'll be honest with you. I tell my wife this all the time. I was, I tell when I watch that show, which. That's my show, right? So she doesn't really, she just sits there. She doesn't really care about it too much. She likes Troy Landry, but other than that, uh, who doesn't? Well, Troy's a great guy, but this sounds like fun, except, and you don't have to shoot him in the head when you get him close to the the shore. You don't have to, but, well, you're not plankton, so they don't care about eating you. Um, so I guess the, the question I want to know, so let's say I've never been snagging, um, but let's say you've sold me. I'm, I'm, I'm hooked now. I want to go. Where, what am I looking for? Like when I'm looking for a spot to go snagging, I mean, I'm assuming I'm not just finding a body of water and throwing a hook down there. I can't tell you the specific. Don't tell me no, your no, spot. We don't know no spots. Just we just want to know what kind of tell things. Me how I, tell me how I find the good spot. Usually for running water. Yeah, usually right? usually rivers. Okay. Uh, you can do them in Lake of the Ozark by boat. Yeah. Nowadays, they just use sonar and drive right to the to the fish and snag them. It's, it's, it's easy. Yeah. It's cheating. Yeah. No we prefer to do it from the shore like the manly men. Manly men. Manly men. Manly men. Manly men. Two and a half. Oh, <laughs> sissies out there in boats. And- no, usually, well, when, when we started, it was Warsaw, um, 65 Bridge, which you go across every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Warsaw. Uh, that was as close as you can get to the dam. Yep. If you pa- sure. did pass that, you got in trouble. But, um, and then obviously, Bates County <laughs> is where we. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. So okay. dirty, dirty running water, and needs to be running water. Yeah, because because the, they're spawning. I was going to say that's the time of year it is. Is they're swimming up stream yep. to spawn, and that's when the season is. Yeah. Okay, okay, I like that. So, is there a limit on how many spoonbill you can catch a day? Is there two. a daily limit? You two. can catch two. Yeah. Is there a size limit? Thirty. Well, it depends. I go thirty four inches because. That's just the easiest way to do it. They say 32, but 34 okay. is the way to do it. Ha- you, so, have to be over 32 inches, but you say 34. Yeah. But I, and I get that, right? Might as well, you know. Yeah. Better safe than As sorry. big as these things are. Is there um, – so, if you're snagging them, obviously, a lot of people are going to go, oh, goodness, you've got these big hooks in them. They come back. They're not 32 inches. Just unhook them, throw them back in. They're fine. Yeah, usually. I like yep. it. Yep. I like it. So, what's the largest spoonbill Nick Schweitzer has caught? This big. 84 pounds. 84. 
got yeah. a picture of that one? That is a big... Uh, I was telling Brad earlier that I'm trying to find pictures of it. Okay. Yeah. That is yeah. a... No, no proof that I caught that one. Yeah. No, it I was it was at Warsaw. It was... Uh, I was... You just kind of got to know the area. There's a ledge that goes right underneath the so dock. So what area were you at? Warsaw. <laughs> it goes right underneath the, <laughs> the outside of the dock. There's a ledge that you could fish off of, and they were just running in on that ledge. And I told Brian, I'm just going to jig for one right here. Just... Thought it'd be fun, and sure enough, that's what happened. I dropped really? it down, pulled up a couple of times, and hooked it. Wow! And then it came back around right into the boat slip, so I didn't have to fight it. Awesome! <laughs> yes, he was trained. Yes, he was. <laughs> I like that. Well, she, the big ones are she's. Well, of yeah. course. Right. Well, and that brings us to another thing, and and I don't know how much you know about this, but a lot because they are spawning. A lot of the females are full of eggs. Yeah, and there is now again because I don't want to get. Anybody in trouble going, well, I heard it on, but there is a process. Is there, well, no, let me ask it this way. Is there a process to keep the eggs and eat them or no? Because I know that people do that, I'm not saying here, but I'm saying like around the world and other, other parts well, of the world do it. I mean, it's the same as uh, caviar. Right, right. And I don't know the whole story of it. I know that Oklahoma, I think they harvest it. Okay, um, in Oklahoma, but you can't Missouri. Cannot. No, not even for personal use. No. Okay. Um, what I'm saying is no. Okay. Whatever yeah, somebody wants to do, but yeah, you can't. If we you have, move. if you have a female that has eggs, if you have those eggs outside of the female, you're okay. So contact your local. <laughs> yeah. Right. Seriously, don't get in trouble with that kind of stuff. That's just silly, right? To look, contact actually, your local. They actually had a sting up in worse. Really. Really, well, I didn't a, know it was a three-year. It was a three-year investigation that, yeah, didn't. Well, yeah, not, contact your local um, Department of of uh, Conservation, Conservation. agent and find out. I mean, again, it would be silly to get caught and know you were doing wrong, but it's even sillier to get caught <laughs> yeah. because you don't know what you're doing, right? Yep. So you talk about catching all these these spoonfish. Spoonbill, spoonbill spoon fish. Yeah, or paddlefish, um, right? Paddlefish. Spoon, fish. Spoonbill yeah. or paddlefish. Yep. Um, Same thing. What do you do with them once you catch them? I mean, I'm guessing, are they good eating? Do you, do you eat them up real good? or <laughs> They're not the best eating fish. Okay. Um, as Brad saw when Doug caught his, it was there's a lot of waste involved, but uh, okay. you can either fry it, I think it's all right, or smoke it. Okay. Which I will say. Keeping it lit is the tough part, especially out of the river. You can take that part out. <laughs> Dick likes smoked meat. He is a fan of lighting up his smoker and putting everything on there. I mean, yeah. if it's if it's uh, if it's edible, he's gonna stick it on that smoker, which is always a good I'll thing. Nothing wrong with that. No, I'll try. Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? You like smoked meats? I I like meats that smoke. Okay. Uh, so just a little. Question here, Nick, because again, of our relationship, um, do you like taking people that sna uh, you know, snagging for the first are, time? Are you going to get in the guided it, tour business of snagging? No, well, no, but as in like maybe Doug Lawrence, who well, is that was uh, the, that was, now. That's the word that he couldn't come up with. That was the name that kind of came to my mind was Doug Lawrence because I've heard this story and I think it's a great story and I think you should share the Doug Lawrence first time snagging story. It was a lot of work involved. <laughs> Mainly the work was me pulling his fish out of the water. Was the work for <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he I think on his third cast, I was like, Well now you need to let it rest and then he hooks a fish and catches it. Third time. Yeah, and it was a good sized fish. Yeah. Yeah. And the work was me getting it out of the water. Right. Right. Yeah. So then he let me go ahead and cast a couple times and he got rested up and come down about four more casts, <laughs> caught his second. <laughs> How yeah. many did you catch that day, Nick? None. <laughs> None. He was, he was that's why Nick doesn't take people the, fishing. Yeah, the best part was I had to clean it for him. Well, and that's what I was going to say. So how much do you charge for these tours? We might put your number up there and get you some business. <laughs> right. Not enough money. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. And I, I definitely had to work hard that day. I like so it. I'm out of that business. Out of that yeah. business. Retired. Now I, retired yeah. successfully. He no longer Now I just take my home. kids and carry the fish for me. There you go. That. The only reason to have children. Say here, that's the reason. That's it. Um, I like to carry my own fish. I haven't had kids yet. <laughs> um, it's because you don't catch very many. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't need the extra set of hands. I can do it with mine. Um, So I don't know about you guys, um, but when I go out fishing, hunting, really do anything, I like to take snacks. Snacks. I'm a snacker. Snack. Um, It lets you stay out there longer, right? And enjoy the day more. Because if you're not catching anything, at least you have something to kind of, I don't know, snack on. Why not? Um, So take snacks. But I didn't know, like, if you had a preferred snack, because I heard that, like, popcorn was a really good snack when you're fishing for spoonbill. Well, yeah, in Bates County. Right. Okay. Oh, well, any, no, any Bates County? So, so let's go south of Butler. Okay. okay. Yeah. So Butler and so, South. So Butler popcorn South popcorn. popcorn. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I got it. Yeah. I got it. I, I want to, it. We need protein popcorn. So maybe I don't come up with that. Protein pop. Yeah. It's that, right there. It's a little I like it. You take, you take some jerky. bacon, well, right, or jerky, and throw it in, and that way it's almost like trail mix, right? You get a yeah. popcorn and jerky at the same time. We may have just come on to something. Try the next tailgate TV. Well, we're going to have to cut this part <laughs> out so yeah, nobody else steals our idea. So this is going to be edited out. <laughs> I don't want people stealing our stuff. Man. Jerky corn. There you go. Jerky protein pop. I like it. Yeah. Um, okay, we got... Not that because we haven't been having enough fun. We got uh, some fun questions fun for you. Questions, fun. All right. They are special, 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 special questions. The um, secrets curated just for you. Okay. Uh, over or under 164 pounds was the largest spoonbill ever that is, caught. That is the in North America. That I mean, is the I, record. I, yeah, I, not yeah. over or under. That was a yeah. trick question. That do you know where it was caught? Uh, Ozarks. No. Rich Hill. No. no. I don't know. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Keystone Lake, to be exact. You know the year it was caught? No. It's been a while, though. Do you know the year it was caught? 2021. Oh, well, you, yep. That's 2021. That's accurate. There you go. Nick knew it. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I was just seeing if you knew. <laughs> so in Oklahoma, not Oklahoma, that was in Oklahoma. That was in Oklahoma. Yeah. So we're going to move on. In, in Missouri, do you know what the largest one was? No. Like a gander. See if you can get within 10. 126 pounds. That's Under, pretty cool. 140. Oh. Pretty cool. And that one was in? Bates County. Like of those arcs. Like, can we start these over? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> gonna take, take two. Take two. Um, now, if you move down south, this one is, is a stat that uh, Bradford curated. And I, I'm not, I threw this one in there just for. I'm not sure if it's accurate. Razor back over here. But do you know what the biggest one in Arkansas, according to Brad? I'll give you this hint. It's smaller. I don't think I don't think you have it than Missouri. Really? Yes. I'm surprised. I see. I was guessing there's going to be 300 pounds. You know, they they get Arkansas is the place. I don't to know. Go. I've never heard of them in Arkansas. Well, I'd assume it's well, probably toothless. It's probably a northwest, and that really you know hurts the weight because them teeth weigh like, like them dork that. fish. <laughs> <laughs> Caught on the corn. So dog. it does make sense. It is Arkansas. Yeah. I, sorry, guys. I, yeah, any all of our Arkansas, Arkansas yeah. listeners are going to be disappointed. The four of us. Yeah. <laughs> that Bill League ball thing is so funny, though. 102, though. 102 really? pounds, yeah. 102 pounds yeah. in Arkansas. A I'm huge about. fish. I mean, that's, yeah, that's you think about fish. it, but I can't imagine catching 140 pounds well, and then dragging that thing sideways. Cause that's, a, that's a thing. In a boat, you can just reel right up to it. Sure, and, right. Well, yeah, you in take the, river, the boat to it. In the river, you're pulling a piece of plywood. Right, <laughs> right, the right. Water. Yeah, I can There was imagine. a time that we had to use two different rods to get one of them. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't get it moved because of the current. But. All right, we got, we got three more of these. All right. True or false? Cody Morris was out at home plate when you called him out. In slow pit softball last year. Well, time. yeah, I mean, yeah, out. I, I there was, there there was, was an easy one. Yeah, was you can't go back and change. First of all, first why of is all, he running home? That was my question. First of the all, the first time I ran all season, <laughs> only time I ran all season, except for the one time I slid. But that's a different story for a different day. And you got to start putting a GoPro on your hat when he plays. I think I do because we can send those into funniest videos and maybe had, make some cash off had, of it. Yeah, there's people who had the chest. We cams. have GoPros on yeah, our team. We do this legitimately. That we way are. I can call New York and make sure that you are out. Yeah, and you need help on those foul balls. You, we'll, we'll, we'll get you some automation. There was two those. reasons why I knew that you were correct. Cody brought One, up. you were the umpire, and you do a great job of that. And number two, it was Cody. I know he was out. He probably yeah. was out by 
a well, long, long way. If I w- didn't call him out at home, it was going to be out at third because he missed the base. I yeah. started on third. Right. You have to go back and tag yeah, it up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> would you rather? Here's a fun one. Would you rather? Don't, don't laugh yet. Would you rather eat rather. popcorn Uh-oh. in Adrian, Missouri? Okay. Or a Mexican prison? Popcorn in a Mexican prison? Yeah. They serve that. Now. They have that, that down there? I heard do. that. Got a little. What? Is it bad that it's a. I heat of cheese on it? It's a close. <laughs> that's, a that's really close. I mean. It's an either or. Just because I don't have to get my. Pa- well, my oh. passport. I don't have to get my passport to eat. That, that, Adrian. Yeah, that would be the whole thing. So right, that maybe, would 50, of, maybe 51. Maybe 51. Okay. So there Adrian. is. There is. There, <laughs> You heard it here first. There is a scenario where Nick will eat popcorn in Adrian. There is. There is. Yeah. It, it involves a prison in Mexico. But I mean, there is this whole scenario. thing started with Doug, by the way. Yes, it did. <laughs> so I the, just the expanded popcorn on popcorn champion, it. by the way. I just loves, expanded on it. He loves popcorn. Yeah. Doug loves popcorn. Yeah, we're going to have a popcorn review one of these days. And uh, do you know where the Spoonbill capital of the world is no this might surprise you but you've mentioned it you've been there you fished in the spoonbill capital of the world warsaw warsaw missouri it really? is it is officially the spoonbill capital of the world oh wow. that's kind of cool to me yeah i never knew that no yeah. we've driven through there many times doing many different things and loved, nice every, loved every minute love of warsaw i beautiful people go good popcorn up. Good popcorn, right? Mm-hmm. That's you, why the Spoonbill are there so and it, much. It, it, there honestly, if people have not went up to the the uh, the dam mm-hmm. overlook and the museum they have in there. That's a really really fun thing to do if you're into that kind of stuff. And even if you're not, because I'm not really a museum guy, but that's a neat place, and it it shows you all kinds of stuff. It shows you some dinosaurs that they found as they were digging that out, and all kinds of fun stuff. And Spoonbill, there's some big. Spoonbill in there. And here's the Spoonbill capital of the world. So, where's the best place in Bates County to go Spoonbill? The river. Or where's the second best place in the Bates river. County? <laughs> the it river. The other river. It all depends yeah, on the river, day. Yeah. This river. It depends on the day. And, yeah. I mean, everybody knows that there's only a few spots that you can. Yeah. You just don't get a lot of snags. And, and i tell you what's amazing to me. Because I know a couple of the spots that you go, or at least areas in which it's the same water. And the crappie fishermen are hitting it on at one spot, yeah. <laughs> and then the yeah. the uh, spoonbill guys are at the other spot, and it's amazing yeah. how much, really, how much fish is in those river. It it it's yeah. kind of yeah, amazing to me. Yeah. So we want to thank Nick for being here with us here on Tailgate TV, and we've got some people we'd like to thank. Absolutely, our wonderful sponsors who help make this possible. Uh, every time we come in here, Sonic who hooks us up with all kinds of goodies and and just really supports the show. O3 Customs, who I think we're getting ready to pick up another package of hats today. They keep us supplied um, with hats. They do tumblers now. Stay tuned. I think next month we're going to be able to get you a special. Uh, get you a special. Special, 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 Thank special. You. On Tumblr's um, PrepCast, they they hang out with us. They sponsor us. They they work with us. CNS Graphics, Mid America, Emmanuel Baptist Church, Butler Chamber of Commerce. Just we we're blessed to have some wonderful sponsors to work with, and we like to thank them. Absolutely, we are, and we do. We want to thank all those uh, people very much. And again, I want to thank Nick for coming in and kind of going through some stuff about spoonbill fishing. It's coming up here. Starts March the fifteenth. Get out there. Get your stuff ready to go, and then go hit the water. Be safe. God bless you. Thanks for watching another episode of Tailgate TV.